द वे फॉर इज थोड़ा बहुत बहुत स्वागत है मैं थोड़ा होस्ट हरजोत सिंह अज असी इस मुल्क की राजनीतिक बनकर प्रजेंट पॉलिटिक्स तो कॉन्सटीट्यूशन की गल करा एक लीडिंग अटर्नी मिस्टर अरनेस्ट बूनाकोरी के नाल जो कि एक जज भी हैं यू वेलकम मिस्टर बूनाकोरी Thank you Harjit. Nice to be with you. Uh Mr. Bonakori, we are a community of recent immigrants and many of us did not go to school here. And there's something uh, we missed. That was a class on civics which would teach us the history and basic principles of this society. Uh I uh, welcome you here today and I would urge you to teach us to tell us what are those principles on which this great nation was created but first of all uh tell us something about yourself okay well uh i am an attorney mm-hmm. uh, i have an office in the bronx i've been practicing for 25 years mm-hmm. uh i'm also a judge in suffern new york where i live mm-hmm. and i have four children uh and uh they're the the light of my life and as you can imagine <laughs> and uh, mr bonacori uh, uh comes from a family of italian immigrants is that right yes that's right mm-hmm. um interestingly my uh my grandfather uh on my father's side came over uh, uh when he was a young man and he mm-hmm. found work here he was he was uh driving a garbage truck and, mm-hmm. and that was just about all th- that he was um you know was able to work and and do those sorts of things until uh his uh until he was able to make it better for his children my father to and my and and uh, my grandmother for them to uh, allow uh them to go to school and they they were they worked their way up through the public education and mm-hmm. they went to college and then of course um my sisters and my brother and i had a, an a g- even greater opportunities mm-hmm. and i was fortunate enough to uh, be able to graduate from college and go to law school and even and run for a judge and and, and and that's an american story yes <laughs> uh c- can you tell us something uh about the circumstances uh, in which this country was created and what is it that you would call the founding principles of this country sure well we we recently celebrated the 4th of July mm-hmm. as you know that's that is the birthday mm-hmm. of america mm-hmm. uh that was the day back in 1776 on July 4th when the declaration of independence mm-hmm. was signed mm-hmm. uh and uh the the drafter of the declaration that was Thomas Jefferson he was given the task of um recording uh w- what m- many in that community uh were feeling and that was the the tyranny of uh Britain mm-hmm. don't forget the american colony america colonies. was a colony of the british yes mm-hmm. and it was um had been a colony for uh, approximately 150 years or 200 mm-hmm. years and um they felt that they were um unfairly treated mm-hmm. right they, that uh they needed um more rights that the the king king george was was not providing you there the, the the phrases are taxation without representation mm-hmm. uh and they they didn't have a say in the government they all of the local judges were beholden to the king mm-hmm. king george mm-hmm. uh you know they were when they when people were accused of crimes they were extradited to brought back to to britain to be tried you know and 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 they didn't have access to um a fair a system fair judicial system mm-hmm. uh and so they had no rights at all except those that were granted to them by the king and so uh, um this this uh revolution mm-hmm. uh began to take hold whereby they believe men such as Ben Franklin and Thomas Jefferson and uh James Madison who's the father who's referred to as the father of the constitution mm-hmm. uh he felt and they they felt that um that 
they had to fight against this tyranny, mm -hmm. and they had to, they, had, they believed in individual liberty. Mm -hmm. um, in the Declaration of Independence, it says, uh, we hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal. Mm -hmm. um, the text talks about being endowed by the Creator with uh, inalienable rights. Mm -hmm. and, and this was a, this was a concept that really, th theretofore, heretofore had never been uh, uh, tried, you know. So there, there are many uh, new ideas, novel ideas, uh, which, uh, which were presented at that time and uh, which uh, we see leading to the uh, to this great uh, document the constitution of united states K will you uh, uh, shed some more light on those uh, principles which which were new at that time we uh, now take uh, the whole concept of democracy for granted that that's why it's important to keep uh, remembering what was those principles for which uh, men fought and and this unique system was created one of the first things that uh, that led to this uh, great uh, revolution was the concept that the rights are not given by the king. Correct. Every person has some inherent rights. Can you tell us more about that? Yeah, and the, as, as it states in the Declaration of Independence, mm -hmm. uh, that uh, each of us are uh, bestowed rights by the creator, whether, whether you um, uh, believe in a particular god or um, you know, particular faith, it didn't matter. It was that the, the concept was that the, our rights were not given by the king and were not bestowed by other men on other people, but they were inalienable, they couldn't be taken away, mm -hmm. and they were, they were bestowed on the people, and then those people, the people turn around and give rights to the government. Mm -hmm. So the government is, is empowered by the people, mm -hmm. not the other way around. All right. So, if in, in layman terms, if we have to understand this concept, so what would happen earlier was there was a king, and he would give these special rights, whether by creating knighthood or whatever, right? Like right. in Europe. But uh, this thought said that every human being has certain rights. Yes. And these rights do not come from king. It it just. Uh, uh, happens to be there just by the fact of a person being alive, a person being a human. Now, uh, whether it's a religious concept that uh, it comes from some creator, nature or, or whatever, but just by the fact of being a human being, you have those rights which cannot be taken away. Correct. And, and what are those rights? Um, well, again, in the Declaration of Independence, they, they outline the rights of life. Mm -hmm. liberty mm -hmm. and the pursuit of happiness okay of course there's no guarantee to happiness but you're we're all free to that's whether you pursue, pursue it yeah okay uh, uh, now you 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 mentioned how uh, something interesting of course um, in, initially America was also founded upon um, the the toil of slaves mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. and of course they were not considered human at that time. They were not considered uh, uh, equal. Mm -hmm. And that, that is one of the great travesties uh, of our founding. Mm -hmm. um, um, and it is as enlightened as uh, these people were and as educated as, as the founding fathers were, many of them owned slaves, as you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, was a, it, 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 it was a stain on their, uh, their existence and it was uh, something that many of them uh, knew was wrong mm -hmm. yet it was a, 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 an economic system that they couldn't do without mm -hmm. um, thankfully eventually um, uh, uh, Africans were um, given certain rights mm -hmm. they were recognized of course for uh, our brothers and sisters and um, uh, that wrong was rectified. I mean, you know, this, this is a great experiment, the United States, and, and it, it has many, many wonderful aspects to it, but, uh, you know, there are they also... It, as well. Of course. We are uh, making uh, improvements as, as time goes as by. As we go. As we go. Uh, this concept, 
the founding principle, all men are created equal. So slavery is an excep exception to that. Sure, and, and women weren't included. And women rights as well. That as well. Mm -hmm. I, I understand it was in 1920s that uh, the women were given an equal right to vote in this country. Right. Is that right? Suffrage, yeah. Suffrage. Uh, liberty is individual liberty. Uh, is is uh, a cornerstone uh, of of the founding principles, right? C can you explain to us wh what is the concept of liberty? I think it's most easily understood as uh, freedom from oppression of the government. Mm -hmm. uh, that I should be entitled to do what I uh, want, so long as it's not affecting you and burdening you. Mm -hmm. um, that means practice my own faith a certain way. It means pursue whatever career I want to do. Uh, um, and as you know, here in the United States, we have that unique opportunity. And I think that was, that's what led to the prosperity that we have, the innovation that we have in, in the United States. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, individual liberty and limited government, they sort of go hand in hand. I, I, I'm not. The, the, the founders didn't believe that they should, you should have no government. Mm -hmm. Government has certain rights and, the, and certain responsibilities, um, mostly to protect the rights of the individuals um, and also things like the individuals can't do themselves like uh, a standing army and, and, and uh, uh, provide for the general defense and things like that. But, but the founding fathers were very uh, clear on this that uh, they wanted a limited government. Uh, Jefferson said that I don't believe in good government, I don't believe in efficient government because bigger the government, it's always oppressive. A government always becomes opp oppressive if it gets uh, too much power. Right. Is that right? But at, at the same time, uh, James Madison said that if uh, we won't need any government if men were angels, and that's a, not the way it is, right? We will uh, talk about this further after a short break. The way forward is thoda fir tu swagat hai. Main thoda host Harjot Singh. Aaj asi gal kar rahe hain Mr. Ernest Dinal. Sanu das de pin kin principles the U.S. Constitution banaya aur a jada mulk hai o chalaya. Mr. Bhunakori, the concept of limited government. I think a uh, lot of credit goes to Benjamin Franklin uh, for creating those juntas when they were not satisfied with the kind of services their government, which was the British government, was giving them. And they, uh, rather than uh, you know, accepting uh, the situation they were in, they said that we should get together and improve our own condition. And that was an experiment which led to the thought that government is not required for, for every aspect of your life, the things that you can do uh, yourself. Is, is that right? Yes, exactly. It, he, he created these juntas um, and they were a, a, an opportunity for the citizens to get together mm -hmm. and, and discuss uh, the politics of the day and the you know what what was required of them and what was uh, being demanded of them by by the the crown the British crown um, and those were s sort of uh, seed beds of ideas mm -hmm. uh, for this this notion of limited government mm -hmm. um, and individual liberty <clears throat> you know. Uh, James Madison as the father of the Constitution he's the one that came up with this idea of the separation of powers mm -hmm. and so everything that the founders did they were trying to um, prevent a tyrannical government from taking over mm -hmm. and, and as you had mentioned early earlier um, the idea is to uh, the, as the, the government just grows and we see that happening we're, we're, Today in our lives, we're, we have far more restrictions on us mm -hmm. now than, than the, the original and, uh, founding of the country. Mm -hmm. Every law that's created, every regulation that's created, mm -hmm. you know, we, now we're, 
where here in Queens, mm -hmm. the city has its own laws. Mm -hmm. The state of New York has its own laws. Mm -hmm. uh, the, of course, we're also subjected to federal government laws mm -hmm. e in this right here as we sit. Mm -hmm. um, and so the, we are constantly uh, uh, losing our liberties in, t in tiny increments, really. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's something that they, were, that they were very aware of and that they wanted to prevent. And um, the separation of powers mm -hmm. was a way to, uh, in, in the U.S. Constitution, was a way to keep the government in check, mm -hmm. right? Separation of powers, meaning that there are three branches of government. Mm -hmm. uh, first of all, there's the legislature, which makes the laws. Mm -hmm. The executive, that's the president. Mm -hmm. The executive enforces the law. Mm -hmm. And the judiciary, mm -hmm. the judges, mm -hmm. um, apply the law. Mm -hmm. uh, so there are checks and balances of uh, balances on each uh, yes. form of government. Sure, power. The legislature creates a law. The, the, the president has a power to veto it mm -hmm. if if he doesn't like it. Mm -hmm. Then again, the legislature can override the veto if they can get enough votes for it. Mm -hmm. uh, the 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 legislature, the House, and the Congress has the authority to. Um, do investigations on the executive branch. Mm -hmm. We see that now playing out with, with uh, uh, President Trump and the various, in mm -hmm. various committees that are investigating mm -hmm. um, whether or not he had ties with Russia. Mm -hmm. um, there's also, of course, the judiciary. The, the judiciary keeps a check on the legislature. Mm -hmm. you, I, I, I'm sorry, and we have seen these recent uh, examples, like the uh, the Trump uh, government uh, proposed this idea of having the citizenship uh, question yes. in the census, and the courts turned it down. Yes, mm -hmm. that was a question that was on the census for years and years, but it Before was 1950. dropped. Yes, it was dropped in the 50s, mm -hmm. and uh, he sought to reinstate it. His administration, Wilbur Ross, is the director of. Um, commerce. Secretary of uh, Commerce. Right. Yeah. And mm -hmm. it, it was at his instigation that the that question was added. Mm -hmm. um, that was a, a, the topic of a recent Supreme Court case. Mm -hmm. um, I think it was Secretary of Commerce versus State of New York, mm -hmm. which essentially said Interestingly, they didn't say, no, you can't have that question, mm -hmm. but they, they looked at the motives mm -hmm. of Secretary Ross and they said, this doesn't seem to add up. It doesn't make sense mm -hmm. uh, what you're saying uh, as to the reason why you want that in there. And, and now they've asked the government to come up with a better reason yeah. for why you want to do that. Yes, they've, they've sent the mm -hmm. case back down to the trial court, mm -hmm. to the district court in New York. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, Maybe that question will be on the census mm -hmm. if the administration can articulate mm -hmm. a, a, a meaningful reason for having it in there. Mm -hmm. so Secretary Ross had said that um, it would help the Department of Justice better enforce the Voting Rights Act. Mm -hmm. But uh, his actions didn't really bear that out. It, 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 apparently there was a question of whether or not that was really his motive. Mm -hmm. um, that and that's an, that's a very. It, it has raised a lot of having that question on the census mm -hmm. has raised raised quite a uh, many issues. We we will uh, go into the politics of that uh, another time. But uh, now, uh, you see, we it's very uh, easy for people. Uh, to call uh, ourselves the oldest uh, democracy, and uh, but they fail to realize what a new concept, what the uh, what a new concept uh, concept of a representative government was uh, at that time. It's it's revolutionary. Can you can you tell us what what was going on at that time with this rep concept of representative government? Right. Sure. Mm -hmm. And as as I'm sure your your audience knows. Uh, Arjat, here in the United States, we're, we're not a democracy, mm -hmm. right? Democracy is, is is often referred to as mob rule. Okay. So a democracy is 
51 percent of the people mm -hmm. vote a certain way and that's what happens here in the united states we're a democratic republic mm -hmm. a, re a republic is a is a confederation mm -hmm. of states okay and in fact that was very important to the founders states rights yeah the concept of federalism mm -hmm. exactly mm -hmm. when i think federalism i think states rights what uh -huh. what uh they didn't consider themselves a United States of America when the 13 colonies um, uh, sought their independence. Okay. They, they were really a confederation of states mm -hmm. and each with their own militias and uh, currency. Some had their own currencies and, and their own identity. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, however, um, th this concept of uh, federalism Mm -hmm. which is, again, like uh, a sort of a, a, a strength in diversity, mm -hmm. you know, strength in numbers, or, um, the individual states with their own. Yeah, uh, it's, it's a unique system which uh, uh, respects and uh, lets, uh, let the states keep their own identities, maintain their cultures, exactly. and at the same time come together as one nation. Exactly. Mm -hmm. and, and, and this again... Uh, was a unique feature which said that the central government, the federal government should have limited power. All powers should lie uh, with the states and only the powers that are not defined can, uh, can be given uh, t to, the, to the federal government. Uh, that's, that's the 10th uh, amendment. Right. Can, can you tell us more about that? Yeah, the, the whole concept of the, the Constitution, you have to remember, it, it's a negative document. Mm -hmm. It says, it, it's, it doesn't grant the rights to the people. Mm -hmm. It says what the government may not do. The people, mm -hmm. and, in, and by extension the states at that time, mm -hmm. had unlimited rights. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, again, always thinking about keeping tyranny in check. They wanted this constitution uh, to prevent the federal government from be, becoming this... Uh, Goliath and I, I, I think this it. this concept is very important for everyone to understand it it's it normally it's it's the uh, usually it's the Constitution that gives uh, various rights and powers yeah. to people uh, to, to individuals right, right. but uh, the Constitution of US said every human has certain inalienable rights right this, that constitution does not give those rights right. that uh, those rights come to that person from the creator right and then they created a document which is called the constitution which would put limits on how much it can violate uh, those rights exactly. is that right exactly mm -hmm. Congress shall make no law uh, abridging free speech. That's the First Amendment, or part of the First Amendment. Mm -hmm. It always talks about what the government may not do, mm -hmm. rather than granting what, what's permissible for individuals to do. Mm -hmm. uh, another uh, concept, uh, which I don't know how unique uh, would that be, but uh, a very important concept was a concept of owning private property. Uh, it was believed that no one can uh, take uh, another's uh, property, fruits of uh, another person's labor. Can you tell us uh, more about that? Yes, in fact, uh, that is probably the hallmarks of the prosperity that we see in the United States. That private property, meaning land, but also the fruits of your labor, mm -hmm. um, they, the government cannot take them away. You have rights of, of ownership. Uh, and, the, and then there's the, the takings clause in the Constitution, which says they can't be taken away by the government without just compensation. Mm -hmm. So uh, they're protected. Mm -hmm. But let's say you own a house that's in the way and, and they want to put a freeway through that. Mm -hmm. The government must give you uh, the, the uh, appropriate value for your house if, mm -hmm. if if they need that and explains you know articulate some uh, need 
to uh, before they can confiscate mm -hmm. private property. And, and uh, besides that, uh, it, it defines the difference between a capitalist society and a, maybe a communist society, uh, a socialist society where uh, that they might not have uh, rights to private property. And here it was uh, believed that every human has a right to his own property and no one individual uh, should take uh, uh, the fruits of labor of another person. I wonder if uh, the debate around uh, taxation, uh, sometimes some people uh, just hate the idea of being taxed. Is, is that uh, one of the fundamental uh, principles behind that protest? Well, I think it's understood that you can have certain services without taxation, mm -hmm. right? It, yeah, the government has to have some funding, but um, but to, I think the, the issue with taxation is that it, it becomes all-encompassing and that it, uh, it gets out of control. Mm -hmm. And so um, it would be nice not to pay any sales tax or any income tax, but uh, yes. the society needs to function, and so there's got to be a balance. Mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. uh, the other uh, concept which which i believe is the hallmark of uh, uh, the constitution uh, and the whole idea of uh, the the rights uh, in this country is is the bill of rights right can you tell us uh, more about bill of rights and the freedoms that it aims to protect sure again it's it the purpose of the Bill of Rights, remember the Bill of Rights were not in the Constitution originally. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, they, they felt that uh, about 20 years later the, the Bill of Rights were added and they felt that they needed to be more specific in controlling the, the, the government. Mm -hmm. For example, the First Amendment talks about the, the freedom of speech, mm -hmm. the, the freedom to practice religion. It says that, that uh, Congress shall make no law establishing a religion or the or the uh, free exercise thereof. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a huge, that's, and that's, re, that's interesting, there's only a, a few lines in the, in the First Amendment about religion, but there's a great debate that has raged uh, since that time. Uh, Mr. Bonacri, we will uh, speak more about uh, uh, this, this particular uh, freedom after a short break. So, we break The way forward is Tola Firtu Swagata, Matola host Harjot Singh. Uh, Mr. Bonakuri, the Bill of Rights to me is the most interesting uh, document uh, defending uh, individual liberty, freedoms uh, anywhere. Is that right? And, and it extends from uh, the First Amendment, the Second Amendment. Can, can, can you tell us what, what does it defend in all those amendments? Yeah, sure. The, it is an, a miraculous document mm -hmm. in that it limits the power of the government. Again, getting back to that same thing, the, the founders wanted to avoid tyranny. So the First Amendment, uh, Congress shall make no law abridging free speech. Mm -hmm. So uh, the, the state, the, the legislature cannot say can it stop me from speaking my mind because when i speak my mind and i and i gather and i people around and i can talk about and i can criticize mm -hmm. the government that's that is the beauty of these united states we cannot be punished for that mm -hmm. uh, we can also practice whatever faith we want to mm -hmm. congress will not establish a religion nor will it um, prevent me from practicing the, the re religion that I choose. Mm -hmm. um, the, th the Second Amendment, of course, the Second Amendment, we think about the right to carry guns, right? Well, the, the whole purpose in, in the, uh, in the um, Constitution was, of the Second Amendment was to provide for a well-ordered militia mm -hmm. so that if you needed to take up arms against the government, mm -hmm. you could do that. Excuse me. I think that is something unique. I don't know if there's any other uh, government uh, in the world which encourages its people, allows them to hold, uh, to have guns, yeah. 
to be able to stand against the very government that's giving them that right. Yes. I, th I think that's something unique. But is, is that the way it has uh, be, uh, been interpreted always? Do you mean that people are allowed to have F-16s at their houses? That is a good question. Mm -hmm. uh, most people don't understand the Second Amendment. Most people mm -hmm. don't understand that it is, it is uh, the purpose for um, fighting back against the government. Uh, these days, we have, a, we have a many millions of people, 300 million people here in the United States. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> perhaps we don't have the, uh, some, some people do not have the, the discretion or the, uh, the respect for human life or the other people. Mm -hmm. uh, and unfortunately, you get crazy people who do awful things. Mm -hmm. um, um, but if, if, you, if you stand on the principle and the purpose of the law, yes, you should have, an F, have the right to have an F-16 because the government certainly has F-16s and greater firepower. <laughs> uh, so that, it, it's, a, it's a good debate worth having for sure. <laughs> um, it's not for hunting. <laughs> you know, it's, it's not for uh, uh, sports shooting. It's, <laughs> it's for... It's for taking pack. Uh, it's for preventing the government from taking y your belongings and and uh, your family away and your own self away. Mm -hmm. That was the original so, purpose. So that's that's a very critical uh, debate, and I don't know how far uh, it can go if they can be billionaires having nuclear weapons uh, of their own in the, in their backyard uh, to confront the government at any time. I don't know how much the government is going to allow that. We, we might have to go back to James Madison when he says people are not angels. We have we have to uh, keep that in mind. Uh, the rights continue. Yes, the project. Third Amendment. Third mm -hmm. Amendment we don't hear about any longer because mm -hmm. it's, it just doesn't come into play, but it was the government can't be forced to house soldiers mm -hmm. in your house. Yes, again, uh, and that comes uh, from uh, that, that pre-revolution time again when, when the Britishers, uh, I think after 1774, they housed uh, all the soldiers uh, in, in every house in New York. Right, it mm -hmm. was, it was a, a way to brutalize mm -hmm. uh, the, the citizenry mm -hmm. to keep them down and to keep them uh, from, from acting out. Mm -hmm. uh, and they continue, the Fourth Amendment, the government uh, uh, may not uh, conduct un unreasonable search and seizures in mm -hmm. your persons and in your property. Mm -hmm. um, you know, th as a judge, I, I sign search warrants all the time, but they have to be based on probable cause. The police come to me and they say, we, we have this evidence that so-and-so is uh, hiding a weapon in his home and we, we would like to go in. And, you know, I review all the facts and make sure that uh, if there's that there has to be probable cause mm -hmm. that a crime is being committed mm -hmm. before I will permit, give them the authority to enter the house. So, so, so there's a complete uh, defense of our individual liberties, of our freedoms. Uh, Mr. Bonacari, I, uh, I, I personally believe the repository of uh, democracy, of uh, rights, uh, the power going down to the citizens uh, is the, the concept of local self-government uh, in this country. Uh, tell us more about uh, this, this, the con how this, this self-government works. The three branches of government mm -hmm. are not only for the federal system. Mm -hmm. In my own locality, mm -hmm. we have a mayor Mm -hmm. as the executive branch. We have uh, trustees, they are the legislature, they make the laws, and we have the courts. So uh, it's played out on every level, not only the federal government, but it's the same on the s in every state, mm -hmm. in every county. And, and all these town. positions are el elected uh, offices. Yes, mm -hmm. nearly entirely. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I myself ran uh, just this past November, and I was fortunate to be reelected to a, a four-year term. The terms are different. Mm -hmm. the, the legislature has a two-year term, much like the federal government. But uh, uh, th it, it's, that allows the, the people of my village, the village of Suffern, to come out to uh, go to local meetings, to have their voices be heard. There's always, there's always an opportunity for um, 
the public debate. Uh, they, they are invited to come up to the stage. I'm talking about in, in these monthly board meetings, mm -hmm. the village board meetings, mm -hmm. and, and um, be heard on certain issues. Of course, ultimately, the, the, the citizens, the voting public has the right and the authority to say, to elect their representatives, right? I, I, if I didn't do a good job, I will, I will not be reelected the mm -hmm. next time mm -hmm. it comes around. And that's true for the legislature and the trustees. And, <clears throat> and Arjot, that, is, that, that repeats itself on every level of every government um, <clears throat> from my village right up until the federal government and the Congress. It's, a, it's an amazing system. And, and uh, how, does it, how does it work? Uh, what is a petition? Where, where does it start from? Um, the, a petition mm -hmm. is merely um, a, 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 a paper that is carried, mm -hmm. that I carried. A, a, it's a way to get on the ballot. Mm -hmm. um, you have to seek the approval by, si by signature mm -hmm. of members of a particular party to be on their line. Mr. Bonokari, uh, we'll take a small break and uh, we'll keep talking about this after the break. So, see, they do the way forward. The way forward is Thola Firtu Swagata. Asi Galkarea Aj US Constitution de Bare, Mr. Ernest Bonokari Dinal. Mr. Bonokari, I understand that. Along with uh, being a judge, you're also into private practice. Is that right? Yes, uh, mm -hmm. I have an office in the Bronx. I I practice injury law, mostly specializing in construction accidents, people getting hurt on the construction site or falling from scaffolding and things like that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, uh, I understand there's a lot of protection, uh, in, in particularly in New York, for uh, gravity-related uh, injuries. Yes, New York has specific laws that uh, protect workers mm -hmm. under certain circumstances who fall from a height or who uh, uh, have materials that should be hoisted properly that fall up upon an injured worker. So any gravity related injury mm -hmm. has a, a special application in New York State. Mm -hmm. And under s the right circumstances, the, the fault of the uh, worker is not considered. Mm -hmm. uh, in that situation. Uh, we will uh, talk more about that uh, in, in our uh, coming editions. But we, we uh, discussed uh, the founding principles, our constitution. We, we just, <coughs> excuse me, want to discuss uh, a little uh, on, on how these uh, principles work uh, with our uh, current politics or our uh, contemporary political history. Uh, lots of uh, people in this country, particularly on the re Republican or the libertarian sides, uh, feel very strongly for state rights. Uh, there was a lot of opposition to uh, the civil rights uh, movement uh, which gave rights uh, to the black people in this country along with some others uh, which uh, are the basic human rights that uh, this, this, this country pr protects. But despite that, <laughs> excuse me, <coughs> there was opposition uh, on, on the pretext of state rights. I uh, personally uh, don't think there would have been an end to slavery if the federal government had not intervened. And there would be no civil rights if, again, the federal government uh, would not, not have uh, made this strong uh, legislation. What do you think? That is true. <clears throat> the federal government has stepped in in those two situations. And of course, most recently, uh, uh, the, uh, our uh, lesbian and gay uh, individuals can now marry each other here in the state of New York mm -hmm. and throughout the entire land. That, that was a landmark case that was recently uh, overturned just uh, two years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, it's true that the federal government has stepped in and protected rights 
uh, for certain individuals, but many argue that it goes too far. For example, uh, the, the, the most issue-driven uh, case um, idea that we have is, is abortion. Mm -hmm. you know, uh, of course, you know Roe versus Wade said that uh, a woman has the right to an ab abortion up to a certain time of the pregnancy throughout the United States. Uh, <clears throat> there, m many pro-life individuals will argue there is no such right found in the Bill of Rights or in the Constitution, mm -hmm. that it was really uh, one that was created mm -hmm. by uh, Justice Brennan, who I believe wrote the, uh, the, the opinion, mm -hmm. uh, that he, he himself talked about having to stitch together um, ideas from different amendments of the Constitution it's, to create very, that right. I, I think this is one of the most uh, contentious uh, <clears throat> issues uh, in the country right now. And I understand that uh, Roe versus Wade is, is not just about abortion. It's about individual liberty, hmm. right? The various rights. And uh, I think it's, it's a fundamental, is, is it not a fundamental uh, liberty for someone to decide what do they want to do with the fetus? Is, is, is the government, uh, uh, should the government be uh, deciding? And is religion a factor in that? Is there a state religion that you're creating by advocating that position? There is a religious factor because mm -hmm. uh, many faiths believe that life is sacred. Mm -hmm. right? and that, and so should there be policy based on that religious faith? Well, we, we all have laws against murder uh, of adults. Uh, so it's a question that we wrestle with here in, in, in our culture, in our society. Mm -hmm. uh, you talk about states' rights, mm -hmm. uh, pro-life individuals, don't want any abortion, uh, but uh, a step toward that would be allow abortions in the state of New York and California, but if a state like Mississippi doesn't want to have abortions, they shouldn't be forced under Roe v. Wade. They should, their community should come together and say, we don't want abortion in our locality. That's federalism. That would be an example no, exactly but, of federalism. But, but we look, uh, there's a bill of rights uh, against uh, which any state law is seen. So if there's a state law which violates that basic fundamental liberty mm. that the U.S. Constitution uh, protects for every individual, whether in New York or in Mississippi. Sure. They, they have a right to that, uh, that freedom. But that our job, the mm -hmm. Roe was based on the science at the time and said you, you can only have a, an abortion up to the first trimester. Now we know that uh, fetuses or infants, if you will, in the womb uh, um, have feeling and react and have a heartbeat and are able to live outside the womb um, at a much earlier age. So it's it's a it's an interesting dilemma it's an interesting uh, dilemma and a very big debate which again uh, will need an entire segment on sure uh, you know, uh, mr bonakari uh, i think uh, it was lot of novel uh, and unique and new ideas that uh, this constitution was uh, created with this this country came up with but sometimes i feel that there are uh, certain uh, sections of the society who have again got stuck it's not that the the ideas that were new uh, 300 years back have to remain like that for the next 5,000 years, the next 2,000 years. So from time to time, with the needs, uh, case in point being uh, uh, the role of government uh, in businesses, I believe President Reagan refused to have an industrial policy. And as a result of that, there were at least a few industries identifiable. Japan, uh, you know, gained advantage in the auto industry. There was semiconductor industry. There were several industries um, which countries outside U.S. took those benefits because of our government's position that government should not get into, get into this and will uh, stay away. I think times have changed. Times keep on changing. But mm -hmm. in, in, in opposition to that, Harjot, look, look at what happened with regard to the solar industry mm -hmm. under President Obama. Mm -hmm. uh, you remember the failed company Solyndra. Mm -hmm. it, there was the government choosing winners and losers in, in the technological field of, of uh, you know, alternative energies. Mm -hmm. And uh, they all went bankrupt because because there wasn't a demand for them. Uh, a 
tremendous amount of money, uh, government, uh, you know, incentives was wasted. Mm -hmm. uh, Sol Solyndra doesn't exist anymore. Um, and, and some would say that was because it was the government trying to force a particular outcome rather than letting the market decide. But, but hasn't the government uh, created a whole industry uh, with this uh, green uh, energy that we're talking about and U.S. leads the world or it's uh, on its way to uh, become the world leader and it's technology of the future? Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, however, it wouldn't happen without government dollar incentives. Uh, People, if I'm going to put solar panels on my roof, I'm only going to do it because I'm going to get a tax rebate from the government. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, so uh, we, we can't completely overlook the role of the government. I think government played a very important role uh, with building uh, a middle class uh, after the war with its GI bills and all. Sure. I think the government plays a very important role in uh, our education. Right. Sure. And uh, there, there's a debate, there's a debate which uh, should carry on, which uh, will carry on. But I, I just hope that uh, uh, we, we take uh, reasonable uh, approaches and be guided by the founding principles. We should never uh, steer away from our founding principles. Uh, but uh, we have to accept uh, the changes uh, as they come. Mr. Bonacari, it's been a pleasure talking to you. It's Thank been a you. very informative uh, session, and uh, we hope to have several more of these sessions and learn from you about what's uh, happening in this it's country. my pleasure, Hajar. Thank, Thank you, you very, very much. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Ernest Bonacari, we will talk to you again. You will see the way forward. <laughs>